Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. For premium picks, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, they call boxing the sweet science. Right, and it's because of the technical parts of the sport that I believe Floyd Mayweather is going to dismantle Marcus Maidana in a few days. Let's compare some of Floyd's skills to skills we can readily identify in other sports. Right? In American football, they have a phrase that relates to quarterbacks. They call it a quick release, right? A quick release is the amount of time between when a quarterback sees the open receiver or where he's going to throw the football to when the ball leaves his hands, right? And, of course, the ball has to leave his hand accurately. One quarterback, he's in the Hall of Fame, who was known for a quick release, was Dan Marino. Right? Marino could literally see a receiver and get rid of the ball faster than most. Right? And the ball would get there. Marino was one of the best passers in NFL history. Right? By contrast, Tim Tebow. An athlete with a lot of leadership skills, right? Certainly a guy who had success in college, but Tim Tebow has a slow release. So Tebow would see the receiver. Then he would have to do a wind-up to get rid of the ball, right? There was a little hitch. You know, he would have to sometimes tap the football, right? He would have to you know, move his body in a certain way to get the ball out of his hands, right? Let's talk about a quick release concept in other sports. In basketball, you could be a great shooter and not make it because, of course, the defender is going to be up on you unless you have the ability to stop and pop, get rid of the ball quickly, right? Think about the time between when you see the rim, decide to shoot, and when the ball leaves your hands, right? In track and field, if you're a fan of Usain Bolt in the 100 meters, right? You want, you know, a fast reaction time at the start of the race. Right? Bolt sometimes has a slow reaction time and it costs him. Right? Ideally, you would want a Ben Johnson type reaction time. When the gun goes off, you need to get out the blocks. A guy who can get out the box, the blocks quickly, has a decided advantage on his competition. Well, one of the reasons, I'll make other videos. But one of the reasons I believe Floyd Mayweather wins this fight big is because Mayweather has one of boxing's quickest releases, right? Mayweather can go 0 to 60 very quickly, right? When he sees an opening, he can get off the punch to get through that opening. Right? And he doesn't need to worry about a wind-up. Let me explain a little bit. I believe both Manny Pacquiao, here I am picking on Pacquiao again, I know many people are groaning, but I believe both Manny Pacquiao and Vladimir Klitschko, most of the time, need to touch you with their non-dominant hand. Right? Vladimir Klitschko needs to touch you with the left hand 
so he can lean back, get his balance, to drop his spectacular straight right hand. Manny Pacquiao has a lot of hand speed, but from distance, I believe he needs to come in and touch you or at least throw his right hand, right, he's a southpaw, before he drops that pile driver left. Right, neither guy leads much with their dominant hand. Vladimir Klitschko's improving. I've noticed of late he started leading with his dominant hand, but that's new. Right, that's new. Now, Floyd Mayweather, by contrast, against Robert Guerrero. That's the tape I want you to focus on. Mayweather looks at Guerrero, they're looking at each other several times in the fight then Mayweather will literally, with a quick release, get off a straight right hand. There's no jab in front of it. Right? He'll get off a straight right hand that hits Guerrero flush, and then Mayweather will move away. Right? So the problem with fighting Mayweather is you don't know what he's going to hit you with. Right, because he can lead with the jab, he can also lead with straight right hands. And he can do so quickly. There's no tell. Right? Against Manny Pacquiao, take a look at even the last Marquez fight when Pacquiao gets knocked out. You'll see he's coming inside, but he's always pawing with the lead hand, right? He needs to paw because that's part of his wind-up. That's part of his delivery system, right? With Vladimir Klitschko, we refer to a 1-2, right? It's a weight shift where he needs to, before he throws that straight right hand, he needs to do something with his left hand before he drops the right. So if he's facing an excellent defensive fighter, right, that defensive fighter is gonna look for tells. Right, they're gonna look for things like Manny Pacquiao pawing at you with his right hand. Right, Marquez has his counter set up. So when Pacquiao tries to throw the left hand, he goes right into Marquez's counter. You can't set up those counters against Floyd Mayweather. Let me also talk about Mayweather's accuracy. Understand, according to CompuBox, forget all the hype, forget the reputation. According to CompuBox, you can go back, let's say, six, seven fights against world-class competition. There is no fighter in the sport with a bigger gap between the percentage of punches he lands and the percentage of punches that his opponent lands. You can talk about all of the great defensive fighters in the sport. Bernard Hopkins, Andre Ward. Nobody approaches Floyd Mayweather according to the CompuBox numbers. And what I want you to understand further, as you look at Mayweather, is that for all of this talk about Mayweather not fighting anyone and all this other nonsense, few people in the sport fight a higher level of competition than Floyd Mayweather. Right? Robert the Ghost Guerrero hadn't lost for years. Saul Alvarez, his last fight, hadn't lost at all. Right? Marcus Maidana, his next fight, is a reigning champion. Understand Mayweather somehow, while supposedly fighting nobodies, has shares of the title right now in two different weight classes. Folks, he's 37 years old. 37. 
right? And he's picked up the belt in two different weight classes. So let's just put it this way. Against elite competition. And understand, some of the guys who Mayweather has beaten after they fought Mayweather went on to win titles. Shane Mosley, for example. Right? Against high-level competition. Championship-level competition. Didn't Canelo have a belt when he stepped in the ring against Floyd? Understand that the gap is the biggest in boxing. Right? Floyd's accuracy is outsized. It's not uncommon to see compy box numbers from a Floyd fight against an opponent who's world class, where Floyd lands more than 50% of his punches. So Floyd really is a Dan Marino figure. Only Floyd has the rings, right? He's able to throw punches quickly. It's a quick release with both hands, right? He's hitting an excellent defensive fighter, Juan Manuel Marquez, with lead left hooks. Take a look at that videotape, right? You can't tell what's going on right Floyd's not giving it away he doesn't tip his punches and then whoops there it is right so Floyd is literally throwing punches quickly and he's landing that right he's you know it's a quick release married with accuracy understand a quick release does you no good if you're inaccurate Right? If your opponent can just stand there, watch your punch sail by, he's not going to care about your quick release. Right? With Floyd, they have to care. Now contrast that with Marcus Maidana. Let me say this. Maidana's a lot better today than he's ever been. His trainer is one of the jewels of boxing, Robert Garcia. Right? Let me just point out, since Freddie Roach keeps winning every Trainer of the Year award, just understand there are a group of trainers out there who, in my opinion, are as good, right? Marcus Maidana's trainer is one of them. Well, Maidana has improved his style tremendously with Robert Garcia. Here's the problem, though. Maidana has a wind-up. Right? You can tell when Maidana is going to throw a punch. Maidana also has a problem with a moving opponent. You didn't notice it against Adrian Broner because Adrian Broner is not Floyd Mayweather. Right? Broner didn't move much. Broner thought he could stand there and play chess with Marcus Maidana. Broner obviously did not know about the blueprint tape on Maidana, the Devin Alexander fight. Right, folks? That's the blueprint. I believe that's what Floyd follows. What Alexander established is that you can just move. Go from point A to point B and back to point A. Throw punches on Marcus Maidana and take advantage of the fact that Maidana has a wind-up before he throws punches. Right? Let me also point out too that Maidana is very deadly when he's up on you. Right? When he's right in front of you. If your back's up on the ropes and Marcus Maidana is right in front of you, there are better places that you could be in the ring. Right? That, that fight strategy might not be your best idea. Well, as good as Floyd Mayweather is up on the ropes, I don't expect him to fight the kind of fight that he fought against Victor Ortiz. I believe with Maidana you need room to move. I believe Mayweather is a master at where he places himself in the ring. Right? 
I believe Mayweather is going to want to have space to move. I'm expecting Mayweather to move like he did against Robert Guerrero. Now here's the $50 million question that I have for this fight. Since Mayweather is so fast, much faster, much faster than Marcus Maidana, Right, and since Maidana has a problem with movement, will Floyd get off enough shots to try to make a statement and to try to stop Marcus Maidana in the later rounds? In other words, Amir Khan was able to knock Maidana down early. Victor Ortiz was able to knock Maidana down early. Madonna can be hit. Right here, you're talking about hand speed and accuracy. Right? From really boxing's top shelf, the best. And of course, the availability of the Devin Alexander tape. Right? Increased knowledge on how to deconstruct Marcus Maidana. Understand, Maidana barely won any rounds, if he won any rounds, against Devin Alexander. That's how convincing that tape is. Right, so as you watch these guys, just understand, if Floyd and Marcus Maidana decide to throw a punch at the same time, Mayweather's is gonna get there first. Right? If Mayweather loads up, as he almost always does, on the power shots here, understand that first shot might not only take the steam out of Maidana's punch, but since Maidana throws punches with the loop, if Mayweather can dodge whatever Maidana's throwing back, Mayweather's going to have a second, third, fourth, fifth bite at the apple. There is the possibility that this fight becomes Mayweather Gotti 2. Right? If you want to see what happens to a fighter who doesn't have Floyd Mayweather's quick release, right? At, or Floyd Mayweather's level of defense, look at the Mayweather Gotti fight. This is a statement fight. Before the Broner fight, a lot of people were comparing Broner with the man Broner calls his big brother, right? Floyd Mayweather. There's no comparison, right? The question is, how much does Floyd Mayweather at 37 want to stay in the pocket to show the world that there's no comparison? Right, Mayweather's last stoppage was against Victor Ortiz, and of course Ortiz was distracted and looking elsewhere during a moment in the fight where neither Ortiz nor referee Joe Ortiz were ready. Right? Well, all I'm saying is if Mayweather wants to quiet the skeptics of his punching power, this is the opportunity to do so. Let me make one more point that needs to be said. Something happened in that Broner Maidana fight late. Broner stung Maidana. Maidana looked tired. He goes to his corner. Now, let me choose my words carefully here. Right? I don't know what happened in the corner. I'm not accusing anyone of anything illegal in that corner. Right? What I will say is this. The film is up on YouTube and I invite everyone to look at that film. Whatever happened in the corner Marcus Maidana goes from being winded and out of it to re-energized, right? 
The coroner admits that there were cotton swabs around. Right? Okay, fine. Apparently one cotton swab was up by Madonna's face. Right? Someone in the corner, I'm not going to mention any names. Someone in the corner put a cotton swab up by Marcus Madonna's face. Suddenly Marcus Madonna was re-energized. I'm telling you that many people in boxing are going to be looking hard at Marcus Madonna's corner throughout this fight. The point is this. Against a stationary Adrian Broner, Marcus Madonna was very tired late in that fight. Very tired. Right? Here, he's going to be fighting a more accurate and a more mobile Floyd Mayweather. Right? There is a possibility late in the fight that Marcus Madonna simply gets overwhelmed. If the hand speed is as much of a problem as I think it's going to be for him, the hand speed gap between Floyd and Madonna, right? Madonna could well be stopped, right? For me, the intrigue here isn't on whether Floyd wins the fight. I think Floyd does. The intrigue is on whether Floyd is able to get a stoppage, right? That's the intrigue for me. But I do like Floyd. I do expect Floyd to win the fight. The fight may be unbettable if you're just taking a winner. Right? If you're a hedge better and you want to see if you can make a profit, what you might want to do is take Floyd to win. Hedged against Floyd by KO. With the idea being that you break even if Floyd wins, you make a profit if Floyd wins by KO. Just juggle the numbers and stuff like that. What I don't see happening is Marcus Maidana being able to land with any consistency whatsoever on Floyd Mayweather. Right? Mayweather is not Adrian Broner. He's much better. I'm expecting him to show it in this fight in part because of his quick release. Don't be surprised if Floyd isn't able to hit Maidana repeatedly with flush punches. Don't be surprised if at the end of this fight, when we go back and look at the CompuBox numbers, Floyd has landed, let's say, at least 47% of his power punches. We'll see what happens. Let me know what you think. Tell me what I've gotten wrong about either the Devin Alexander fight, Marcus Maidana, um, the end of the first fight, the Adrian Broner, Marcus Maidana fight, uh, my comments about Floyd, my comments about a quick release. Leave your comments here in the comment section and let's have the discussion. Thanks for stopping by.